Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. In this jury cat tutorial, I would like to show you how to create a stop bus form with the B setting to create this pendant. Are you ready? Let's get started. You may see a lot of the B setting that I show on my YouTube channel. If you are interested in other type of setting, I do think this will be beautiful for the channel setting as well. So you can check out my course on my website. I'll put the link in the description below. Before we actually go into model, we need to thinking about what is this piece going to be. If you're going to have a chain to go through, this uh, high probably will be okay. But if you're going to making a brooch, you need to make sure where's the contact in the back that you can have the mechanism in there. All right, I'm starting from the scratch. Let's take a look on the top view. First of all, you need to decide how big is this piece is going to be. And I'm wanting them put to be somewhere close to 40 millimeter and smaller than 40 millimeter as a pendant or as a brooch. Then the second thing is you are going to make the loop that is going around with this circle. So the command that you're going to use is called helix. When you use the helix, you do have the two options. The first one is vertical. Pretty much you will get is more like a springing things as you can see on my perspective. The second option that you have on the helix is around a curve. So you're going to ask you which curve you want to pick. Then we're going to pick up this one. As you can see, it's go around the curve. Now, this is where I say that how high do you want it? How big the loop you want it? You want to go in so much or you want to just go a little bit shallow. And I would like to have the turn in this case for eight. So let's type it eight and you can type it exactly how, uh, how you want them to go in or, or like what I'm doing here. I'm just eyeball it and for roughly about this size. Okay. So then I have, uh, the eight peak as you can see right there. Okay. Now I need to create it, um, the profile so I can sweep to creating the solid. So let's go ahead to use the conic corner, which I like to use more than the corner um, rectangle just because it is um, the pillow shape. All right. So then I'm coming over here and making a shape roughly look like this. Again, this depends on how big of a stone that you wanted to set and you everybody might be slightly different than, uh, on, on this one, but we do need to move it to the center. As you can see, I can kind of eyeball it to move it, but it may not be exactly right in the center. So I usually what I will do is coming to the perspective. I'm going to draw a straight line in between the quadrant to the quadrant. And when I wanted to move, I want to move all of them using move command, snap it, snapping into the midpoint. And I can coming over here, snapping into the quadrant. So that will be at exactly the same place. I don't need this line anymore. So let's get it. In. All right. So then let's take a look on the sweep. We want to sweep one. This is your rail. This is your cross section. And I want to sweep this. This is not uh, the proper arrangement for the cross section, but I want to sweep and let you know uh, what was wrong. So if you go like this, notice that all of them seems not in the right thickness. That's because this is not, this curve is not in the right angle. Let me move this one on the side for comparison. The best angle is this need to go into the direction with your rail. So what I mean is I'm going to move this one. Look at that red arrow, it's going to point out where the direction of this guy is going to go. So let's do a comparison. We want to use the sweep one rail one more time. This is a very common question that I get all the time. Why my sweep is look like this instead of look like this It's because the direction of the cross section, it should go 90 degree to the rail that direction to go. All right, so then you will get the correct one. All right, so that is super, super important. Um, keep in mind that uh, it's going to make your sweep surface look much nicer. 
All right, so once we have this one, we are going to extract the ISO curve and I need a curve right in the middle as a guideline. So I'm just going to turn this into the red color. So you know what I'm what I'm doing now. If you look at this one, we don't need a stone going whatever behind, right? When we wear this piece of a jewelry, we only need the stone on the top, which is this section between this peak and that peak. After that, then we can use the same setting rotate it. So anything behind, we don't need it. So we need to accurate to cut it that section off. So let me go ahead to draw a straight line, snapping into the zero and holding my shift. So I get something like this. So I need to have this line going this peak or this peak. Um, so the best way to do instead of doing a lot of calculation, I usually do like this. I will uh, polarize this guy. And it was a uh, it was a peak. So I want to polarize 16 pieces for 360 degree and I will have them exactly there. Then I can delete those. Now, if you are good at calculating, uh, you can do the calculating, do the rotating. Either way will work. All right. So we now have those two. We're going to use that to trim the curve of this one and also this one so we don't need the rest of them and we just need that little section there okay so let me did it this one all right so this is the curve we are going to arrange the stone on it you can download this uh, round stone um, in the description below sign up the newsletter so you can get this one well first things we need to know like this definitely not going to fit so that's kind of grabbing our stone and moving somewhere in the middle. You wanted to do is at least have a 0.5 millimeter wall on both sides of your stone. So even though you accidentally polish a little bit more, then you will still have this. Okay, so that's having this one over here. And this is the size that we are going to try. So let me close everything else and we just work on the stone. There's a few things that we need to prepare. First, we need to prepare the prong. So I'm going to draw a straight line. So I'm going to draw a straight line roughly right there. And for about this long right here. And let's go ahead to pipe it for roughly about this size. And um, I have a detailed discussion for like how big the stone size, how big is the prong size in my course. And I'm not gonna repeat it here. So you can check out the course if you want to. And it's really going to be beneficial for your jewelry design because it, without understanding the stone setting, it's hard to make your model really correctly for the 3D printing. Okay, so apparently after adding the cap, this is kind of too much. So I'm going to move it down a little bit and something like this, just a little bit over the table. All right, so ideally, if I mirror this guy to the other side and when I'm doing the stone setting and look, have something like this. So ideally, you do not want a stone touching each other. The best gap is like 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 millimeter in between the stone. And the prong is not cutting 20% on each side. So that will be the ideal setting that we have. So I'm going to delete this guy here. And this will be the group. Uh, let's go ahead to group it first. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to do is to making a color is because any of the facet stone, if you don't have a color, the stone will look dual on um, your rendering. And it will be much better if you do the color, the jeweler will save a lot of time trying to drill all the hole behind the stone. So I'm going to just draw something look like this and coming down somewhere look like here and going deeper something look like this all right now this guy it go crazy on my front view is because I try to snapping into the stone what we can do is coming into the front view and use a projector to the C plane and you want to delete the original input now this piece is on the construction plane flat and after that we can pick up both of them and we just need to use the horizontal align 
and then it will align over there as you can see on my perspective they are aligned perfectly Oop, upside down as you can see on my perspective they align perfectly all right so now we, we have this we need to make a color and I just want to make sure it's long enough so maybe just a little bit longer so I wanted to use the revolve uh, snapping into the vertex and the Z direction moving the mouse to the front view click and move your mouse back to the top view we want 360 degree and then we'll get something like this now make sure that it is a solid and so I want to use the cap command to close it right so now all of this is a group let's go ahead to turn on our shape first and the idea is I wanted to make sure this guy it will stay in right here and follow it nicely along this curve over there okay so first of all I need to have a guideline so let's go ahead to drop a dot right in the middle for the vertex as you can see the dot over there and this dot is currently on the table of the stone I want to make sure that is moving somewhere close to the girdle this will indicate where the surface is going to be alright so now everything's set up we are going to make sure that this whole thing is follow this curve and attach to this surface so let's go to use the transform that you have array and we have a long curve on the surface this is the one that we wanted to use and select the whole things first and snapping into the point make sure you're snapping to the point not anything else and then it will ask you which curve we're gonna pick up this red one which surface we're gonna pick up this one all right so now you can see the whole thing is follow my mouse if you click on it it will stay there now I want them to be evenly out so I'm going to use the option here you have divide when you click on the divide it will ask you how many of them so I'm going to use 10 and just hit enter and then you're gonna see them arrange 10 nicely there so let's take a look first make sure the stone is not touching the prong is touching so that is the important things the where you have a big turn here the color is touching that's fine because we make the color a little bit longer and taller and so it will be be touching so that's fine as long as the stone is not touching so 10 look okay in my case I'm going to hit enter here now you have those 10 let's do a test uh, let's actually group it first and I wanted to have them go all the way around in the same position on all the peak so I'm going to use the polar array and snapping into the zero and we're gonna use the same number for eight and it will see something like this now when you see something like this notice that this is my let's ungroup it this is my first stone and this is my last stone they actually touching each other and I don't like it which means I need to delete my first stone and delete my last stone before I do the polar array so let's go back one step uh, we wanted to ungroup this one and we want to delete the last stone and last color and make sure that you don't delete the prong like what I just did I actually need to ungroup this one and we just want we want to keep the prong there to hold the very last stone um, so the same thing here we're gonna delete this one we're gonna delete the whole set and we want to keep the prong so each of the stone will need to have a full prong and in between our shear so let's go ahead to group all of this and look like I have some curve in there so I'm gonna pick up just the curve and I may want to keep this one this one and cross section and maybe this one and rest of it I will delete this okay so now we have this and we want to make sure that we select all of them and let's do array polar and we want to use eight of them one more time and as you can see it's not touching so it's it's better distant there so then let's try the bowling and in one section and see how it goes so I want this one bowling out by one two three four hit enter 
It said we'll break the history, that's fine. Let's try another set. So Boolean difference, this and one, two, three, and four. So you cut it out nicely. Double make sure that in the perspective that you got this uh, hole cutting over there. All right, so it, if everything look okay to you, let's go ahead to bowling the rest of them. So once you have it, that's turning into the render view and see if that is exactly what you're looking for. Well, that's for today's lesson. I hope you enjoy and find it very useful. I know learning Jury CAD sometimes is overwhelming, but you don't have to do it alone. If you are ready to take your skill into the next level and want a more personal guideline, I invite you to join me for a private one-on-one -on -one section. We will dive into your specific challenging and come up with study plan to help you to learn faster and less frustration. Click the link below to schedule a time with me and let's bring your jury care idea into life. Hope to see you in those one-on-one -on -one section. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.